Hello and welcome to Scratch. I'll be showing you how to make a virtual Valentine's Day card. Before we start our project, let's take a little tour of Scratch. There are two versions of Scratch you can use, a downloadable app and Scratch Online. Both types are free and easy to use, but we'll be working with the downloadable app today. Links to both versions can be found in the description of this video along with some other cool resources. Scratch is a very simple graphic programming language that was developed at MIT's Media Lab. Scratch uses building blocks to create scripts, which are pretty much the commands for a project. Scripts control sprites and the stage in a project. Sprites are the characters on your screen, and the stage is the background of a project. Think of Scratch like a play. You have your setting, which is your stage, and your characters, which are sprites. A stage crew needs to know what to build and set up for a play. Actors are given scripts to memorize in order to perform. This is basically what you are doing, except it's on a computer. Scripts allow programmers to communicate with computers and tell them what to do. Scratch offers eight groups of building blocks. Control, Sensing, Operators, Variables, Motion, Looks, Sound, and Pen. Today we'll be focusing on the Control, Motion, and Looks blocks, but I strongly encourage you to play around with blocks in the other five categories. Now that you know a bit about Scratch, Let's dive into our project. If you're confused or lost, feel free to pause or rewind this video at any time. As mentioned earlier in this video, we will be creating a virtual Valentine's Day card. So let's start by creating our setting. Every Scratch program starts with a cat in the center of the screen. If you do not want a cat in your project, simply click on the scissors at the top of your screen, then on the cat. This will delete the sprite. You can use this technique to get rid of any unwanted sprites. Let's go ahead and get some sprites on our screen. You can either draw or import sprites. To draw a sprite, you simply click on the button that looks like a paintbrush. It will open up a window that looks like Microsoft Paint. For the sake of time, I'll be importing sprites I have already created. You can save pictures to your computer and use those, or you can work with the sprites that came with Scratch. To do this, you simply click on the button that looks like a folder. Select the image you want, and then click on OK. Do this until you have all of your sprites on screen. If you're feeling adventurous, you can click on the icon with a question mark. It will add a random sprite to your project. Now that I have all the sprites I want to use in my project on screen, it's time to resize them. To make a sprite bigger, simply click on the Grow Sprite button and then on the sprite you want to make bigger. To make a sprite smaller, simply click on the Shrink Sprite button and then click on the sprite you want to make a bit smaller. To move your sprites, simply click and drag them. If you want to rename a sprite, Simply click on it down here in the Sprite Zone. Once you're on the sprite you wish to rename, click on the, its name right up here in this gray box. Then type in its new name. Naming your sprites will help to organize you and your project. After you have all of your sprites imported, it's time to work on the background. Click on Stage, then Background. Once again, for the sake of time, I'm just going to import an image, but feel free to create your own. I'm going to import two backgrounds because I want my project to change scenes when running. To delete a background, simply click on the X next to the background. We can add multiple costumes to a sprite as well. Since we're discussing it, let's go ahead and add some costumes to our sprites. Select the sprite you wish to edit. Make sure you're on the Costumes tab. Now click on Import and select the image you wish to add to the sprite. Great! Now before we start to code, Let's save our project just in case Scratch crashes. Click on the Save button in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Then give your project a name. I'm calling mine Valentine's Day card. Make sure that you save your project in the folder you will be able to find in the future. Also remember to save your project every couple of minutes, that way you don't lose any of your work in the event of a crash. We are now ready to start coding. The first skill we're going to learn is animation. I'm going to move my V around. Think of your screen like an invisible graph. You can see the coordinates on the bottom right of your screen change as you move your mouse around. My V is currently at negative 116.41. To ensure that my V is here at the start of the project, I'm going to write a script ordering it to go to negative 116.41 when the green flag is pressed. Every script starts with a control, so let's head over to that tab and get a block that says one green flag is clicked. I simply drag this into my script building zone and I am ready for the next step. My computer now knows that when the green flag is clicked, whatever I put underneath this block should happen. Since I want to set the location for my V, I'm going to go to the Motion tab. 
I'm going to drag the go to negative 116, 41 block and attach it to my first block. Great! Now that my computer knows that when the green flag is clicked, my V needs to go to those coordinates. I am now going to move my sprite to where I want it to go. As you may have noticed, the coordinates in motion did not change. You can either take the time to type the new location of your sprite, or you can switch tabs and come back to motion. This refreshes the coordinates and is a quick way to get out of typing them. I could use the go to block again, but I want to see my V move. Therefore, I will attach the glide to coordinates block to my other blocks. Let's click the green flag and see what happens. Great! My V glides to this new location. I'm going to do this for all of my letters. Now when the green flag is clicked, all of my letters move. Since we're discussing motion, I might as well show you how to program sprites move with your arrow keys. I'm going to program my hearts move with the arrow keys. To do this, I'm going to select my heart sprite. Now I'm going to go to control, but instead of using one green flag clicked, I'm going to drag one space key press into my script building zone. You will notice an arrow next to the word space. When clicked, this opens a drop down menu of all the keys you can program in Scratch. Let's focus on the arrow keys. I'm going to select up arrow. Now let's head over to motion. It's important to make sure that your sprite is pointing in the right direction before you start to move. So I'm going to click on and drag point in direction 90. Now 90 degrees is towards the right. So unless if you really want to confuse your users, I suggest changing that 90 to 0 to match the up arrow. Now when the up arrow is pressed, my heart points up. Unfortunately, this makes it go sideways. There's a very easy way to fix this. You'll notice in your sprite, you have a button that says only face left right. Click it, and now your sprite will only face left and right. To finish this script, I need to add move 10 steps to my block. Now when the up arrow is pressed, my heart is pointing up and it moves 10 steps. To program all of the arrow keys, simply right click on your script and select duplicate. Now change the keys pressed in the direction your sprite points. Your script should look like this. Test all of your arrow keys to make sure that they work and are matched up with the correct directions. If you want to clean up your scripts to make them look a little neater, simply right click in a gray area of your script building zone and select cleanup. Now they are much easier to read. We now know a lot about motion. What about the costume changes we discussed earlier? Let's program scripts for that. I'm going to click on my box of chocolate since it's a sprite that has two costumes. Next I'm going to go to control. We know how to start a script with a key in the green flag. Let's try to start a script when the sprite is clicked. I'm going to drag one chocolate's clicked into my script building zone. Now I'm going to go to the Looks tab. You'll notice a block called Next Costume. Attach it to your original script. Now my chocolate box is clicked, it changes costumes. I want to start on the first costume though, so I'm going to go back to Control and drag the one green flag key clicked into my script building zone. Let's go back to Looks. You'll notice a block called Switch to Costume Costume Name. Attach this to your green flag click key click script and make sure that the costume name matches the costume you wish to start on. Fantastic! Now when the green flag is clicked, you can be sure that the right costume will show. Now let's do some fun stuff with the background. I'm going to program my background to change, but I'm going to have it change automatically. Let's start with a one green flag click script. Now I'm going to add a forever script. This tells the computer that when the green flag is clicked, whatever is in this forever block will happen until the user either stops the project by clicking on the red hexagon or closes the window. Now let's head over to the Looks tab. I'm just going to add a next background block in here and then try it out. Well, as you might notice, the background is changing very quickly. Let's go back to Control and get a Wait block. This will tell the computer to change backgrounds forever, but to wait before doing it. If you feel that one second is too long or too short for your background to change, go ahead and change the number by clicking on the one and entering a new number. Let's click on the green flag and see how our project is working. It's looking pretty great. Scratch has a really great online community, so if you have an account, 
and you want to share your project online, simply click on Share, Share as Project Online. Put in your Scratch username, password, give your project name, add some notes, and then you're ready to share online. There's a quick link here if you need to create an account online. Simply click on Join Scratch, make a username, put a password, and you're ready to go. This is a really simple Valentine's Day card, but there are so many other blocks you can experiment with to make it more complex. I encourage you all to play around with Scratch and create as many great things as you can. My email will be in the description of this video, so if you have any questions while coding, you can contact me. I teach programming in the Pittsburgh area, so the links to my students' projects will also be in the description. Thank you so much for watching and keep on scratching!